Uh, let me get started. I'm uh, here actually in College Park, Maryland at the National Center for Weather and Climate Prediction. Um, and it's a pleasure to be able to, to present this, uh, this webinar uh, as part of HACAST 2020. Uh, as I'm going to talk about new capabilities within infusing satellite data into environmental applications, um, or IDEA, uh, and in particular, I'm going to talk about IDEA International, which is a spinoff from IDEA. So, uh, as a brief introduction, um, infusing satellite data into environmental applications, or IDEA, uh, is now hosted by Noah Nesdis Star. Um, and here's a website where you can get access to that. Uh, this is a satellite-based aerosol and forecasting system, uh, including data synthesis that's been designed for use by the air quality forecasting co uh, community and was actually first developed at NASA Langley uh, in partnership with our, our colleagues at EPA back in 2003. Uh, there's a paper by Al Saadi et al. in 2005 that discusses that. That's been successfully transitioned to uh, operations at NOAA, NESDA STAR, and it's been available for quite some time to the community. This is a screenshot of the web page uh, from that link, and you can see that right now it does MODIS, both Terra and Aqua, uh, GAS, which is one of the geostationary uh, uh, aerosol optical depth retrievals, as well as VIRS, uh, which is a new uh, instrument like MODIS that's on the new polar the operational polar series. Uh, but what we've done with IDEA International is, uh, is, is provide an open source uh, software package and portable version of IDEA so that users in the community, whether it's in the US or anywhere in the world, can download this software package and then very simply install that on, on one of their uh, Linux workstations and actually have the same kind of forecasting capability that's tuned and designed for their specific applications. Uh, so during this webinar, uh, the participants will uh, hopefully have a better understanding of what the new capabilities that we've introduced into ID International are uh, and where to go to obtain software and instructions for installing that uh, new capability on your own system, as well as some links to real-time uh, forecasts that we are maintaining at uh, the University of Wisconsin Space Science and Engineering Center. What I'm going to be focusing on are some case studies during uh, a recent combined NASA NOAA field campaign called FireX. Uh, this was la conducted last summer over the western U.S. during the first phase and then during the southeastern U.S. Uh, and this, this combined campaign provided a very unique set of measurements to look at trace gas and aerosol emissions directly in the wildfire plume uh, and looking at how these wildfires and agricultural fires influence uh, chemistry uh, downwind from the fire source. So let's get into it. The first uh, new capability that I'll be introducing is the capability to not only look at the MODIS Terra and Aqua uh, forecast, but also look at, at the VIRS forecast on the new operational satellites, JPSS, as well as the NASA SUMI NPP satellite. Uh, and this is the main, uh, the main workhorse of IDEA International, and this is also the one that's available for uh, public download and implementation anywhere uh, on the planet. So uh, this particular version of IDEA International, again, is globally configurable, which means that you can apply it anywhere on the planet. Uh, it doesn't use the full resolution uh, imagery or aerosol optical depth retrievals, but it uses an aggregated set of retrievals to initialize trajectories. This just limits the number of trajectories that are that are introduced. And it's most appropriate for looking at uh, large scale synoptic kind of transports of that. Uh, because it's globally configurable, we use uh, global forecasts from the NOAA global forecasting system at half a degree resolution. Um, and in, in, as in the case of IDEA, uh, what we look at is trajectories initialized in regions of high aerosol optical depth, and the, the trajectories are color-coded, where red means that those trajectories are approaching the surface, and white means that those trajectories are aloft and are unlikely to impact uh, surface air quality. 
So here's an example of idea I Veer's forecast on July 22nd of last summer. Uh, if you look at the left-hand side, you can see the initial Veer's aerosol optical depth. You can see very high aerosol optical depths, well above one, uh, over the northern uh, provinces of Canada, and that there's a plume that, that appears to be transporting down over uh, the, the Great Lakes region with enhanced aerosol optical depth over uh, northern Minnesota. If we look at the middle panel, this shows an 18-hour trajectory forecast initialized from those levels of high aerosol optical depth. And you can see that the transport, the 18-hour transport and 30-hour trajectory forecast shows that that high aerosol optical depth should be moving out over Wisconsin and down into central Illinois uh, by the, 20, the evening of the 23rd, the next day. So this next slide shows uh, verification of this forecast. On the left-hand side, we see the uh, the VIRS, a high-resolution depiction of the VIRS aerosol optical depth on the 23rd, one day after the forecast was initialized. And you can see, in fact, that the trajectories have accurately predicted the transport over uh, northern Wisconsin, over Wisconsin and into central Illinois. So at least from an aerosol optical depth perspective, uh, the forecast verifies. However, if we look at the uh, surface PM 2.5 air uh, air quality index from uh, the EPA Air Now uh, site, um, we see that in fact there is really no enhancements, even moderate enhancements uh, in poor PM 2.5 concentrations on the surface uh, on July 23rd. So uh, it says that that forecast uh, didn't accurately predict uh, what was supposed to happen the next day. If we look instead on the 24th, we do see uh, moderate uh, air quality levels in terms of PM 2.5 AQI over Wisconsin and into central Illinois, uh, very much as was forecast, but we forecast a, a day earlier. So uh, what's going on? Um, this, is, uh, this, fig this slide shows results from a field campaign that was going on at the same time that the NOAA FireX uh, and NASA FireX AQ field campaign was going on. This was a uh, NSF field campaign called Cheesehead. Uh, it was looking at uh, carbon and, and uh, energy fluxes in northern Wisconsin. And one of the observations they had was a high spectral resolution LIDAR uh, that was deployed uh, at the NOAA tall tower in uh, north central Wisconsin. This, uh, the stars indicated where that measurement was. On the upper right, upper left-hand panel, we can see a cross-section of the aerosol backscatter from this high-resolution uh, uh, HSRL LIDAR. And you can see that there's a plume. This is during the overnight hours uh, prior to July 24th, so from midnight to about 6 a.m. on the 24th. And you can see that there's a plume of high aerosol backscatter that starts out uh, between two and a half and five kilometers slowly descends down into the boundary layer, which is indicated by the higher backscatter at about 2.5 kilometers, and then appears to get entrained into that boundary layer uh, over the in the early morning. And it's that smoke plume as it gets entrained into the boundary layer that leads to the surface enhancements that are seen on July 24th. Um, so why did the trajectory forecast fail? Uh, the idea I trajectory forecast, like IDEA, assumes that the aerosols are within the planetary boundary layer when we initialize them. This is because we don't have information about the vertical profile of the aerosols. And this was not the case on July 22nd, as we can see from this uh, HSRL LIDAR over uh, northern Wisconsin. So to improve this forecast, we need additional information about the vertical distribution of the smoke. And that's where the the next enhancement in IDEA I uh, comes into play. So the second new capability that I'd like to discuss today is the IDEA I NUCAPS capability. Uh, NUCAPS stands for the NOAA Unique Combined Atmospheric Processing System. Uh, and it was developed at NOAA to generate retrieved products such as temperature, moisture, and trace gas profiles from uh, the new cross-track infrared sounder on the uh, JPSS satellite. So this is a follow-on uh, instrument to the 
the AIRS instrument that many of you may be familiar uh, that NASA launched. Uh, and it actually uses a retrieval very similar to the AIRS instrument. And it's able to retrieval uh, carbon monoxide, uh, vertical profiles of carbon monoxide. Uh, but these vertical profiles are uh, not anywhere near as high a resolution as, for example, we saw with the aerosol backscatter from HSRL. Instead, they give us some indication about the altitude of the pollution layers. And uh, this idea I new caps capability utilizes that to help improve our forecast scope. Uh, so the figure on the right shows a screenshot of the IDI carbon monoxide forward trajectory forecast. Uh, and on the tabs, you can see we can do forecasts for either JPSS1 or SUMI NPP. And we go look at either ascending, which are daytime orbits, or descending, which are nighttime orbits. And in this case, I'm going to look at the ascending orbits uh, from JPSS1 on the same day that we looked at the VIRS forecast in the previous example. Um, what you can see in the same way, we initialize trajectories where we have high carbon monoxide concentrations, and we only initialize those at the altitudes where the new caps retrieval says these concentrations are high. So this is the same forecast conditions as before, but now we're using new caps. You can see that while it does provide some information about the vertical structure of the pollution, it's a much coarser resolution in the horizontal direction. So we really need to be combining both the high resolution VIRS aerosol optical depth forecast with these coarser horizontal resolution new caps forecasts of carbon monoxide. So in the same way, we'll look at the forecast uh, based on the new caps carbon monoxide for the same day. Again, on the far left, we have the initial conditions uh, showing the carbon monoxide concentration at 850 millibars, a bit above the boundary layer. And you can see enhancements in the same region that we saw high aerosol optical depth in the Beers data. And then 18 and 30 hour trajectories. And you can see that, first of all, the transport is much stronger with more advection of this high carbon monoxide to the south, and that the trajectories are, for the most part, white suggesting that they are at least 250 millibars above the surface and are remaining aloft. And it's these stronger winds aloft that result in the advection of these uh, carbon monoxide plume further to the south. This forecast goes out to 60 hours, so we can look now at the, the new caps carbon monoxide forecast for the next day. And this is showing it at 30 hours, again, 42 hours and 54 hours. And we can see that it's only after 42 hours and on into 54 hours that we're starting to see red trajectories. And so it took an additional 24 hours for the, the carbon monoxide trajectories uh, that were initialized aloft to reach the surface or the, low, the, the near the surface over Wisconsin and into central Illinois. And so you can see that it was this need to understand the altitude, the initial altitude of the smoke plume uh, that we need to capture the correct forecast. And this new caps trajectory forecast does uh, validate both with uh, the, the VIRS aerosol optical depth and the surface PM 2.5 concentration. So now I'm going to go on to the third example of new capabilities within IDEA International. And this is utilizing high resolution VIRS retrievals uh, within a high resolution. Uh, meteorological wind system so that we can do uh, much higher resolution trajectories. So, so uh, as I said earlier, we're, when we have the globally configurable version of ID International, we're aggregating the VIRS uh, retrievals, which means that we're losing spatial information about the air's optical depth. Uh, many of the uh, forecasting community, particularly those that are impacted uh, by wildfires in the western U.S., really need to have a much higher resolution, uh, fine scale prediction of where those plumes are going. And so we developed this capability with the high resolution of VIRS forecast. Uh, this uses a, a three kilometer uh, North American model or NAM forecast for the trajectory calculations instead of the half degree uh, GFS, which means that we're able to resolve uh, flow features around complex uh, terrain, for example, or flow features associated with uh, sea breeze penetrations along the shore. Uh, we also allow within, uh, in this high resolution capability, 
we allow for multiple forecast domains. So in the screenshot that you see on the right, you can see that we've got different regions. A floater, which is actually a user-defined domain that you could choose on a daily basis. And in this case, a domain for the Northeast, for the Southeast, and the domain I'm focusing on uh, for this example, which is in the Western US. And again, those domains are all user configurable and, and the user can define what those domains would like to be. So again, this is the same as the, as the globally configurable version, but we're using the full resolution beers retrieval and we're using much higher resolution winds to drive the trajectories. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna look at an event that occurred on July 26th of 2019 during the FireX AQ fuel campaign. So for a little background, uh, these are slides showing the air now uh, surface PM 2.5 uh, air quality index for July 26th through 28th. Uh, and we're focusing on between the, uh, the Northern California and Oregon border. You see enhanced uh, uh, PM 2.5 AQI um, where it is up either in the unsafe for sensitive groups to unhealthy uh, in this region, and this is associated with the Mile Post 97 fire. Uh, this was a fire that during FireX we paid uh, close attention to because it was quite persistent, and it was one of the fires that was really impacting air quality in a in a fairly large uh, populated region. You can see between July 26, July 27, and July 28 uh, that the fire continues to show poor air quality index in the vicinity of fire, and that between the 26th and 27th, you get transport both to the south uh, towards um, San Francisco and towards the east inland along the Northern California border. So here's now the equivalent high resolution beers trajectory forecast uh, for this mile post 97 fire. And we initialize on July 26th, uh, at 19Z, that's the initial Veers aerosol optical depth on the left-hand side. And now again, we're using the full resolution retrieval with high resolution winds, and we're much able, we're, we're better able to capture the complex flow uh, along the, the mountainous shoreline of Northern California. And what we see is that the trajectories forecast uh, the southward movement of the plume uh, at 18 hours and continuing on into the 30 hours and also this branch of the plume that has moved inland along the Northern California border. Um, in the case where we're looking at these uh, high resolution, high resolution beers detections, as well as high resolution winds of these fires, which are very near the fire source region, the assumption about uh, the aerosols being mostly in the boundary layer is a much better assumption. And so for these very localized forecasts, of uh, fire influences in the vicinity of the fire, uh, we have more confidence in these high resolution trajectory forecasts than we do for some of these more synoptic long range transport events, which are often uh, associated with smoke that's aloft. So we pay a price though for this high resolution beers. Uh, it's, a, it's a much more computationally expensive uh, forecast tool uh, to implement. Uh, we have worked with um, Sarah Liu at the University of Albany, who was working with the, uh, the New York State uh, Energy Research uh, Division, and they implemented both the globally configurable IDEA International, which they're referring to as IDEA NYS, and also the uh, high resolution uh, implementation that I've just discussed. And I've highlighted some of the differences in terms of the, they considered the same domain, um, uh, but some of the differences in terms of what the requirements are. So in terms of meteorological input, it's about a more than a factor of 10 increase in the amount of MET data with pulling down the full resolution three kilometer NAM uh, data. In terms of the VIRS data, again, it's about a factor of two increase in the amount of data that you have to deal with. And in terms of output, it's about a factor of 10 output. In terms of overall runtime, it increases by about a factor of 10. And so while the globally configurable version of IDEA International can be run on kind of a standard issue uh, um, 
Linux box, you, you need to have a, a more powerful uh, compute engine to be running this high resolution uh, version. Uh, but we have successfully worked with uh, University of Albany to implement that for the New York State area. So we have precedent and users that have implemented that. So to close out and to summarize, uh, if you're interested in downloading the uh, IDEA International uh, open source version of the software, this first uh, link is gets you to that site as well as installation instructions. Uh, it's been installed at a number of different places uh, across the U.S. and uh, as well as Asia, and the software and installation is fairly straightforward. You end up with a, a web interface and a full set of forecasts like I've been showing here. And then otherwise, um, for the uh, we also have a live version of this website that's running uh, at, at Space Science and Engineering. If you'd like to look at daily forecasts, that's that second link. Uh, the IDEA I NUCAS forecasts are also available at uh, SSEC if you'd like to look at those forecasts every day. Uh, and then the high resolution um, forecasts are broken up into two different forecasts one for the operational GAPSS of VIRS data and one for the SUMI NTP data. And there's the links uh, there below. If you're interested in trying, and if you're interested in forecasting over the continental US, and you would like to use the high resolution uh, VIRS forecast system, feel free to contact me and I can uh, provide people to work with you to implement that on your system as we did with uh, University of Albany.